Hey, Eric. Hello, Chris. Have you started playing Final Fantasy Tactics yet? Haven't even started making the notes yet, buddy. Are you playing War of the Lions or the original PlayStation release? Well, Which one do you prefer, actually? I have no idea. I know nothing about the video game. Uh, The original uh, localization, wrong in some spots. So you're telling me it's a 90s JRPG localization? But it has some funny things about it. I mean, everybody has seen Blame Yourself or God, right? The first time I'm hearing that, but okay. Okay, there's a famous line in that where somebody says, Blame Yourself or God which is wonderful. It's a wonderful line. Yeah. When they retranslated it for the War of the Lions released, the language gets very purple and flowery. Like an Alexander O. Smith joint? I don't know what that means, but yeah, probably. Okay. So I haven't played that one, so, but either one, would, I would be happy to play other ones. So uh, I just wanted to know if you had a preference. So if you don't, then we'll figure it out when the time comes on season six. Which will be in two episodes? Yeah, probably. We awesome. think it's going to be in two episodes. Cool. We'll see you then. Would you like to hear some hot sounds that I've recorded? Sure, man. You mean hot sounds I recorded? Welcome to Retrograde Amnesia, a conference of podcast discussing classic Japanese role-playing games chapter by chapter, beat by beat. Welcome back to Season 5. We're covering Xenosaga Episode 1, Der Wills in it. My name is Chris, and I'm joined today by Eric. Hello, Eric. Hi. Hey, Chris. We're also joined by Kirby the Dog. Kirby the Dog is here for yet another recording session because her friends, other family members, are away eating McDonald's. This podcast is not sponsored by McDonald's. But it is sponsored by The Real Net, a collective of patrons who are watching us record live on a secret video feed at patreon.com slash retro AM. We're also joined by The Fake Net, our post-production AI companion, and the only entity that can play lethal enforcers, kill all the innocents, and still win. Initializing Fake Net. What? Is that not how you win? Is this not the US of A? Do you remember the first time you played lethal enforcers? Yes, I do, dude. That Wh- blue gun. Where was it? Tech World. What were you doing? Riding my bike up there to play Mortal Kombat. You know the first time I played Lethal Enforcers? What? It was at a movie theater. Not quite sure which one. Might have been that one that used to exist where it was like a dollar. Was it called? Village Village 8? Village 8. Yeah. Might have been there. I had just saw Congo with my parents. Oh, wow. my parents. Yeah. Nice. Congo. Yeah. The movie Congo. Movie where they gave an ape sign language vocalized uh, text to speech technology. Yes. I believe the ape's name was Amy. I yeah. believe. Yeah. You know what uh, console got an exclusive Congo video game? Dreamcast? Sega Saturn. Sega Saturn. I was like, yeah, damn. I think Tim, was Tim Curry in that movie? Lost City of Zen. I don't know. Fake Net was Tim Curry in that movie? Initializing Fake Net. Yes. Tim Curry was in Congo. He played Romanian philanthropist Herkerma Hamolka. I, like sure. I feel like every time I say was Tim Curry in that, the answer is always yes. Usually correct. Yeah. yeah. Where Tim Curry is not as aboard the Elsa, where we play this game for the last time on the Elsa, Hammer says, sure, I'm ready. I couldn't ask for anything more than being able to save the world. We'll be heroes if we defeat him. Tony says, leave it to me. There's nowhere the Elsa can't go. I'm with you all the way now. Oh, who's your final party, by the way? Cosmos. Cosmos she- Chaos, Sheon. Yeah, same here. I put Cosmos in the front of my party because I wanted to hear Cosmos run around. I did notice her footsteps were slightly different, maybe because of her... Her uh, girth? I was thinking because of her, like, Ron DeSantis boots. Oh, yeah, yeah. sure. I think the only time, Ron, is nice, high heels is what Chris is saying there. Yeah. I think the only time I played Junior in this game was the UTIC ship when I was forced to. I don't think I put him in my party any other time. Really? Okay. I used to kind of switch between Chaos and Junior a little bit. Music startup test plays, and we launch into an apology from Junior. He didn't intend for Xion to get pulled into his personal issues. Xion, though, waves flappy hands and plays it straight. Don't worry about it. After all, my homeland is in peril, and we've received company approval. So it's okay, right, Alan? Alan responds with a statement that is soaked in sarcasm and hatred. Oh. Oh, sure. Why would I want to miss out on the fun? Besides, it's not like you ever listen to me. So right now at the end of the game, Alan is like fucking had it. He's done. He's out. He's not going to win anything he wants. Assistant Scott is gone. His only friend has just left. Everybody here hates him. He's got nothing left to give. And no one is giving him anything except for chaos. A but little bit. Here's the tremendous irony. When yeah. he said, besides, it's not like you were listening to me, Alan said that last part under his breath, but Sheon heard him this time. Uh-oh. She's finally paying attention to Alan, and she's mad. What was that? 
If you've got something to say, say it. Alan does the anime head scratch, waving it off and then getting serious. Uh, no, nothing. I'd accompany you to the very depths of hell. Great line. It's pretty good. Even though he's saying it kind of sarcastically, I think, that's what, I think that's what's, what's making it great. Matthews, though, is like, fuck, man, are you jinxing us? He then wonders how difficult it will be to get inside the proto Merkaba. Momo then becomes a flight tutorial. Right. There should be no external anti-air defenses, since it was originally constructed as a manufacturing facility. However, security on the inside is most likely still functional. We should be prepared to deal with many active guard machines. And that kind of prophesized one of my favorite things in science fiction, which is the derelict ship still inhabited by active security forces. Yeah. It's a good, I mean, from Arthur C. Clarke to good old Jimmy Cameron. Jimmy Cameron. James Cameron. Also known as James. The parts of this game we don't play, Chris, it's yeah. going to be easy. The parts we do play are going to be tough. That's the way it works. Guinan, Mary, and Shelley form the holy trinity of Zoom calls on the hollow screens above yeah, us. it's a good shot. And Junior asks Mary about the reinforcements from Second Milsha. Our beautiful Southern Belle responds. The space-bound units were destroyed in the first blast. It looks like there's a few more on their way, but they won't get here in time. So it means we're fucked. We're on our own for this. Yes. Because any reasonable person would uh, send any more than our six random heroes to this derelict ship floating out in space to save all of mankind. Yeah, but you say reasonable person. Basically, our boss right now is one of the council of fucked up guys. You lead his Rah- Rahi. Yeah. So, like, she being a fucked up guy. As well as. Got nothing else to give. What we got. Shion human. Alan kind of human. Chaos question marks. Cosmos robot. Junior human robot. Momo robot human. Ziggy former human robot. Yeah, that's fair. All right. Junior crosses his arms and tells us what we already know. In other words, it's up to us. My dude then looks at Guinan and says he's counting on Guinan to cover us until we get inside. Guinan harumphs and then tells Junior, I have a request of my own as well. Don't let his provocations get to you again. All right. He's basically saying, don't let Albedo troll you again. When Albedo has successfully trolled Junior like every single time instantaneously. Don't let Albedo make you turn Super Saiyan again. Yeah. And be un- unable to control your unimaginable power that you don't use in, in normal combat. Yeah. That use is your guns. Unavailable. Use this pistol that we gave you from 1936. Junior says he'll be careful and tells Guinan that he doesn't have to worry. Chris, I ask you, going into this, will Junior be all right? Will he be careful? Can he? Does he have free will? Or is he bound to the dark, cruel destiny of a URTV? I think he is, he is bound to the dark, cruel destiny of a URTV, namely because... Well, because his path keeps crossing with Albedo, and there's nothing he can do to stop it at this point in time, unless he just fucking runs away. Is his will to depower? Yeah, that's a good question, because I don't think that... Like, that's not how that phrase is supposed to be implemented, but I like, know. it does have a function in saying it that way. Yeah. I mean, Junior's will to power is like... he's Junior's used his will to power to stay a fucking kid. <laughs> like, he's used up all that power. It's done. Yeah, he's got nothing else left. Now he's just subjected destiny. Guinan replies harshly. I'll take that as a promise. Mary doubles down and tells Junior not to do anything foolish. Chris, I ask you this now. Who's a bigger liability? Cosmos and her vector black box and Gnosis eating stomach or Junior in his past trauma? I think it's Junior in his past trauma. I think so too, because it's only endangered us and Cosmos has somehow saved the day with all this shit. We do know that there is like some sort of alternate vision of the future that Nephilim showed us way back in the Encephalon. Right, with the hand glider planet. Yeah, where where Cosmos brings her hand glider and has a battle with her true form yeah her true form is to fight Udu in the sky Shelly tells us that all the ECM levels are at their maximum and gives the Elsa clearance to get the hell out of here Matthews gives Tony the signal and Tony wonders if he's getting hazard pay out of this Chris will anyone ever pay Tony anything no Tony works for for room and board I think so too like they're all working off some kind of like criminal debt they are. We we do know that Matthews has debt. I don't, we don't know if it's criminal debt. But we don't know if, like, Matthews has the debt and, like, what kind of debt Tony and Hammer have to get in business with Matthews. Oh, that maybe they have debt to Matthews. Yeah, it's like a pyramid scheme debt. We then cut a space as the Elsa undocks, soars past the Kukai Foundation, and speeds off toward Proto Merkaba. I was kind of happy that we're not going to have to have another, uh, you know, compelling Tony rocket launch battle. I don't know what else s- they could do. Because Exactly, because they we, we had a really good one early in the game when when they first met Ziggy, and we've had a couple others since. I mean, he's got one more in him for the escape. Yeah, and I think right now, just like, let me get to the final dungeon, is a, it, this is a great kind of a decision of pacing. I here. mean, they already hand-waved to the saying there's no security forces because it's just a lab, right? Yeah, yeah. Briefly, the Elsa is now playable. Background computer whirring. 
talk to Matthews, and he says, hey, you're just going to leave that albedo guy there? You're certainly easygoing considering the critical situation we're in. But you know what he'll do? He'll take me back to the dock colony. We can go to the dock colony. Yeah, did you? Do- I did. You did? Really? I went there real quick. Yeah, okay. everything's changed, really. You know, I put the game on, just left it there, idle for two or three days, and came back to it. Everything's still fine. Good. Yeah. When I tell him I want to stay here, he tells me to hurry up and kick that albedo guy's butt. Tony and Hammer both say the same things. Proto Merkaba. Yeah, we're inside Proto Merkaba. This place isn't very cool. No, it's not. It's just a factory. It's an industrial it, factory. It does, however, have music. Uh, yeah, my message here is holy shit. We've had two dungeons in a row that have music. And this yes. is actually a unique song that I don't, I think we've heard it once before, but it was like background stuff. I think it happened when Proto Merkaba was, okay. w- was yeah. emerging. The title, the song is called Inner Space. I finally don't have to capture background whirring in a new environment. I'm so happy I don't have to get up. You did it. Congratulations, we Eric. All Thank did you. It. Thank you for all your hard work on the podcast. It's been a um, celebration of ambient noises. A celebration of ambient noises. You know, I've had a lot of things going on, so I haven't been able to, uh, you know, take as descriptive amount of notes as I like to. Although I do have a lot of notes for this section. Hell yeah! So thank you. What do they call it in Dota? Carry being the carry. Being the carry. Sure. Yeah. yeah, I've played one round of Dota ten years ago. Sure. I may have played four rounds of Dota. Yeah. I, I did play a little bit of Heroes of the Storm. Anyway, thanks for carrying the podcast. Well, Chris, thank you Eric. for doing this while dual wielding education, ch- kids, job, t- chicken. We get off the Elsa and find a dock with a bunch of blue and orange small spacecrafts docked at it. Everything's in perfect shape, which I, I guess in space it wouldn't deteriorate if it's an organic material. I don't know. It's been cloaked for like, what, 14 years or something? Yeah, but like, what does cloaking entail? Can my banana still degrade if it's cloaked? Well, yeah, your your banana, yeah, your banana can, yeah, 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 for sure. You ever put like a banana in a backpack and then find it like two years later? I have kids, Eric. Of course you have. <laughs> okay, I mean, two years later, no. But we were exiting the podcast studio the other night, and I was like, "Why is there rice all over the couch?" And Chris <laughs> went, "Fucking kids, man." I don't. Yeah, know. yeah. <laughs> Things like that as a, as a non kid haver would drive me fucking crazy. It's okay. There's rice on the uh, Zenosaga art book right now, so that's good. It's how it absorbs carbs. I blow up some crates where I find a delphine. There's nothing back here, god damn it. But I also found a defibrillator, defibrillator, defibrillator vest. Hell yeah. In your head, what does a defib vest do? It brings me back to life when I die. Do you think it, it has the shock paddles on it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's like my dad's heated vest he wears for golf, except for it just brings him back to life, right? That thing has to. Did he buy that on like a Chinese website? On like Temu or whatever? Yeah, something that like isn't regulated and has like full of exploding lithium oh, it's ion. it's probably like a golf, a golf, uh, a golf, golf guy, golf galaxy guy store or something. Golf galaxy guy store.com. Enemies. Work droids. Alien power loader, but Ripley's not in it. I got, it is what it is. <laughs> but yes, you're right. I did think about power loaders as well. Also, we uh, fight delphines. Space dinosaur things, spiky boys. Little dragon boys. They do venom claw and poison chaos over and over. Please stop. I looked up this word on Google. Yeah, what's it say? In Greek mythology, Delphine is the name given by some accounts to the monstrous serpent killed by Apollo at Delphi. Okay, that used to be some kind of health insurance I used to have too. That was the code name for it. That's all the enemies I have at this point. Yeah, we're going to do some some puzzles, right? I go up some stairs and enter a smooth future lab. There's mm-hmm. patrolling work droids everywhere. I'm trying to imagine the purpose for any of this and what robots do if they just patrol around all day for 14 years. I go down a ladder and get to a sublevel with three parked cars. They look like SUVs combined with dune buggies. I find more cars. Some are blue. I slaughter all of the work droids. No more work is going to be done. Chris. No, the work is over. This is an anti-work uh, establishment here. I find a total, it's a no-show job. I yeah. find a total of four switches down here. My favorite thing to find in JRPG dungeons. Uh, yeah, I've got, I've got the first obstacle is a bridge shifting puzzle. Very simple, thank you. Because all we have to do is really push these buttons yeah. and walk around the bridge. Thankfully, it's not too complex. It's not too large. Like, it wasn't as intimidating as I first thought. As long as there's no sound tone things, Fuck, then, you know, yeah, I'm good. Honestly, give me a boring dungeon over one that I have to use too many brain elements to get through. Yeah, just let me just let me go through, hit buttons, yeah. open doors. I'm okay with, with that kind of stuff. Shift bridges. Game objectives should not have evolved past Doom 1. You know? You're right. Yeah, I am right. You're right. Just go for this giant fucking thing, find this key, open that door, we're out. Yeah. I push enough buttons to create a path to the elevator, and I take it to floor 40 for some reason. Why would you put escort missions in Jack and Daxter? Oh, the the dock mission from Jack 2? Is that what you're talking about? I'm just talking about that. terrible. I, I never played it. I just watched... Josh played it and it was like oh my god what are you doing anyway 
I'm so glad Xion knows the correct floor, floor 40. Yeah, floor 40 is where we got to go, right? There's a tiny workstation with a massive vertical screen in the hallway, and like, I wish we could read that shit on the screen, but we can't. I go to floor 41 via a staircase. In this staircase, we're going to return to many times. Oh, I love staircases. I go into a room that has a massive vertical screen with images of realians and MIA with a red band all over them. Mm-hmm. Like a lost realians. I've lost my realians. It's like a Rolodex of realian screens. Mm-hmm. I access a green screen computer mainframe. It's showcasing a realian character model along with a stat sheet. And we pop out to a voiceless in-engine cutscene, full party from a Dutch angle. You know what this game needed more of? Voiceless in-engine cutscenes? Yes, computer lore. Yeah, actually, I do think we needed more computer lore outside of our human database. This is what made some sections of Xenogears kind of fun. Yeah. Like you, as you would, prog- you're not only just navigating the dungeon, but you're stopping. You are learning something about the world, and you're having your characters have a conversation, and then you're you're moving on. It was a really good pacing. Everybody mechanism. learned at the for same a game time. that's paced kind of like shit, Xenogears. Yeah, like mm-hmm. there are some good pacing mechanisms in in there that this game could have learned from, but. We don't get them until now. Do you think accessing the human database to look up definitions is diegetic? Like, when you're playing as Xion or Junior, do you think they're looking up shit, or do you think this is outside of the game? It is outside of the game, because it often says, the game says this. Ah. You know what I mean? That's a good Like, it it did that a couple of times in some of the the things. So, anyway. Computer lore. Chaos says, it looks like some kind of data. No shit. Xion says a realian, but it's pretty old. The year Transcend Christ 4474 made by Tyrell Lamech Model 3. Chris, who's Lamech? Lamech is a French mech. It's the father of Noah. Oh, okay. We're still getting bibl- biblical here, aren't we? Yeah, why not? Junior says Lamech Model 3, that's the model that was manufactured up until a year before the Milchian conflict. Duh. Ziggy says the production year and manufacturer all differ, but they are all older than 4752. So at this point, are you like, why are you telling me this shit, video game? We're about to fight the last boss. Why do I need to know what model of reality was manufactured? Like, do you think this is going to tie in? It does. Okay. It eventually does, yeah. Chaos says, it seems all of these realians were transferred to the Milsha maintenance facility due to some kind of abnormality. They sent the fucked up realians to Milsha. Oh, to, on purpose. To manufacture the shit, yeah. Do you think when Chaos says that, he already knows it, but he has to pretend <laughs> yes. to read it? Like, yes. oh, it look, it says here that... Yes. Xion says, but why is this data here? What is all this data for? Momo. Chris, yeah, answer that question, bud. Momo, did Dr. Mizrahi ever tell you anything? Momo says, no, mommy, never. Xion says, I see. People should ask Momo that question more often about Dr. Mizrahi. I do agree. I think the big takeaway here is they sent all the defective models to Milsha because, the, as we said, the Milshan conflict was a false flag operation basically basically yeah maybe not in the same way we, we think about that but it was part of this it was a scenario it was a work yeah yeah and that's all before it fades to black momo rejects sharing the data with the mother yeah okay great let's go to floor 42 sure why not first area looks the same and i'm like god damn it it's the desert prison again but the second is a remixed office this one has three individualized reality and data screens yes more computer lore examining one of the workstations tells us chaos says this one's a list of sick and wounded soldiers. Looks like it's from during the Milshan conflict. Ziggy says they were transferred to Milsha for treatment, just like those regalians we saw earlier. Yeah, An ca- odd coincidence. Chaos had also said they're receiving treatment for psychological disorders. Oh, I missed that part. Okay. Xion says those don't look like ordinary wounds. They're only fragments of the data left, but it looks like something more serious, like mental illness. And this is all describing what the URTV rebellion breakdown a little Albedos. bit. Albedos. Yeah, a little bit. Udu corruption. And we've had some precedent for like mental illness adjacent stuff with this, this stuff from the beginning of the game. Was Udu a factor when these were put here or was that, did that come later? I think, it, it, yeah, it would have all had Like to I just don't know where the corruption, like was this made with good intentions or was it always the fucking third impact shit? Realians may have been made for good intentions, but yes, this was always third impact shit in, in terms of anything that was happening here at Proto Merkaba, I think so. Okay, yeah. Junior says, you can tell all that from these fragments? Xion says, yes. The list of medications here are all ones used to treat psychological disorders. Junior says, I see. Junior says, I see. I guess there's a reason why you're a chief engineer at Vector. Yeah, chief engineer also comes with a list of psychological disorders you have to memorize. A lot of people don't know that about engineers. Xion says, dot, dot, dot. Junior says, what? Did I say something weird? Xion says, what? No, it's nothing. And then chaos gives an ominous three dots. The localization really failed us on that one. No, I don't think it did. But what the fuck are they talking about? What, is Chaos recognizing that Xion knows more than she thinks she knows? No, I think Xion has realized that she's part of this, and she did not ascend to the level of the chief engineer at Vector 
because of her skill. She ascended to that because she's part of this. Oh. She's in the white data. And Chaos knows that, which is why he's dropping dots. And she was literally in the white data when Albedo viewed it. Yes, yes. And remember, her real passion was like working in the division that does all the psychiatric shit to the yeah. Realians. Like, I wish they would have spent more time on that stuff. And she had always talked about how she wanted to like move over to that sector. Yeah. But she was in she was in R and D. And now that all that stuff is, I think, is starting to come full circle. It's like Shion has dueling plot lines with make Cosmos into a real girl and care for the people who definitely yeah. are not real people, but treat them like real people. The fact that the, these scenes are in the game gives you a lot more opportunity to unpack this stuff rather than the voice cut scenes, because usually the voice cut scenes are triggered during, like, conflict... I mean, there are, we did have those everyday scenes yeah, at the beginning, couple, but those were way before we got into any of the scenarios. Yeah, shit. they weren't really plot adjacent at all. It was yeah. character building. And I, that's why I think these are so good that, that they were able to get these scenes in here because they helped build that. Anyway, that's all I have for the second computer lore zone. Let's go to floor 43. The little room here does not have a scene, but it does have a bunch of workstations with their own pneumatic tubes, my favorite thing ever. Oh, yeah, I love banks. The partition up here, when's the last time in your life you used a pneumatic tube? How long has it been? Probably three, four years. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking about, too. Yeah, every now and then I got to deposit a check or something. Without using a mobile telephone? There was a period of time when my bank did not accept mobile deposits. I'm just saying, like, since, yeah. S- yeah. since like, some kind of AI takeover. The partition up here is open, and we can access a control room. There's a save point. There's also a Merkaba prototype hologram. I examine it, and we get a scene. Junior says this is a monitoring room for all of Proto Merkaba. Ziggy tells us that it seems all the controls are centralized here. He wants to know if Xion can locate the reactor core. I mean, again, why are we leaning on Xion for this? Is everyone realizing her spot in Destiny? She knows how to use computers. That's a good point. Okay, good. Yeah, she can use computers. Ziggy definitely cannot use a PC. No, he is a computer, but he can't use one. He is a computer, but he can't use one. Oh my God, that needs to be the title of like your first anime <laughs> directorial effort or something. Your first written. Yeah, that's... It's, God damn, it's dude. It's basically that's, the same thing as God thinks you're a loser. Yeah, <laughs> but like mixed with Philip K. Dick. Okay. Okay. He is a computer, but he can't use one. Fucking play the credits music, dude. That's... <laughs> okay, we're back. Shion doesn't do anything. She just seems to know that it's far below where we are. It looks like we'll have to take several elevator shafts down to get there. Love shafts. Me too. Save point. Junior concludes, we still have ways to go, and he wants to get going. So I'm like, all right, let's go. Floor 44. You know what I find up there? Demons. Satan. Yeah. I run into demons, which are demons. Wing devil, crimson guy, has scythe, floats in air, death spell, instant KO. Fuck me. The best game mechanic, instant KOs. Love it. It's great. Mudos and Hamas all day, son. Yeah. Got a dragon rod from a chest. I'm like, we're still getting new weapons in the last dungeon. Do yeah. You, are you worrying about best weapon in this game? Usually that's like a big JRPG thing, right? It's like, let's get their ultimate weapon. Let's get their best weapon, their best tech. Are you just like, fuck it, dude, Erdkaiser? Well, considering that the characters that we're using here, but we're both using here, one of them, Shion doesn't get new weapons. Right. Chaos just fucking wears gloves. And Cosmos is a weapon. We don't need to worry about that shit. Okay. Sound logic, Chris. Another staircase goes back to floor 43, so let's go down there. I press a switch and raise the platform to the other side. Segment address number 17 is in the other room. I decode it and get Bio 9, Blood 9. I got Blood 9. It's a gun. Okay. For Junior, I assume. Yeah, cool. I think. Think? Fakenet, is Chris thinking correctly? Initializing Fakenet. Yes. Blood 9 is Junior's best weapon. I don't know why, but I wrote in capital letters B I O O D 9. I don't know if I didn't capitalize the L or what. It was written in all caps, I think. Okay. So maybe you just uh, let go of that shift D there a little bit. Floor 42. Yep. I get to floor 42. I push a button on a console and the nearby tube surges with purple electricity and powers up a bunch of stuff in other rooms. And I'm but- like, from my hands, I get like, oh gosh, what exciting things are waiting for me on these stairs? I surely will not have to climb ever again. We opened a door. I go to floor 41. Find a chip garden chest. Thank you. And then I go to floor 44. Mm-hmm. I go down the newly opened central passageway and find a brand new enemy. Yes, the Xanthosis. That's what I got, Xanthosis. 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 It's a stonky robot, a, a real stonker. Big yellow Hulk boy mech, fucking refrigerator ass, giant right fist, left fist normal size. I looked up that word on the internet. Yeah. Xanthosis is a brown pigmentation of skeletal and heart muscles of cattle. Oh, yeah. The condition is particularly seen in older animals in some wasting diseases. 
wasting diseases. Wasting diseases. Yeah, diseases that make you waste away, basically, like leprosy probably is a wasting disease. Fake net, is leprosy a wasting disease? Initializing fake net. I don't think so. Chronic wasting disease is a neurodegenerative disease, which is a disorder that destroys nerve cells, particularly in the brain. It only affects cervids, including white-tailed deer, mule deer, elk, and moose. Chaos when, doesn't have it. I'm going to throw out two words here. Okay. Tell me how you feel about them in relation to xanthosis. Okay. Sibes and adjacent. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, any kind of uh, Hulk and stonker. Calamity-ass motherfucker. Yeah. Okay. That's all I really got other than I get a chakra shield. Yeah. Other new enemies, Iosis. Yep. Purple Look, mecha guy. Yep, I looked up that word. Yeah. Nothing. Left hand double barrel gun, missile launchers on shoulders. Is there any better spot on a mech for missile launchers than a shoulder mounted cannons? No. I don't think so either. It's and, ideal. Unless you can kind of hit, fit them oh, under. Below, on the, like the, uh, they come out rib, like helicopter flaps? The rib cage area. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ab launchers. Behind that is a long catwalk that leads to a satellite dish over a pit. It asks if I want to jump down, and I'm like, yeah, let's commit suicide right here. Yeah, it's a human satellite dish. I guess this is what transfers the... Uh, the proto Merkaba. It, it accepts the... It's the route. It's the fucking... It, where they get their internet. You put from. in the key of Nebuchadnezzar uh, straight into it. Oh, okay. Shion leaps down, and she's met by one powerful jetpack robot, then another intimidating jetpack robot, and then a giant fucking wire hand massive high heel tank guy robot. I love the way this thing looks. Which one? The 2X Schultz or the... Proto Dora. The Proto Dora. Mm, it's good. Do, where do you remember Dora from, Eric? Zeno Gears. Yes. Who piloted the Dora? It was that big tank thing, right? Wasn't that a Dominion? It was Vandercom. Oh, Vandercom, right. Yeah. Of course. This is a whiff. It would have been very good if Vander Cam came out of this. <laughs> yes. I'm back! Mother! Ah, how did I get here? Get me out of here, damn it! So you whiffing this one? Yeah, I'm whiffing it. number 24 i'm curious if it'll be the last i don't think so yeah i don't think so there's an arc coming fucking man erd kaiser i didn't use erd kaiser right away tell me about your fight then i did worry about using erd kaiser at the sacrifice of content for the show however i needed to beat this thing and go to sleep i was in a similar position so we fought it for a little bit and then we used erd kaiser i say we i mean like me and chris me and chaos and, and Shion and yeah. and and whatnot. All the heroes. And then when I, after I uh, used it, I didn't kill it because it has more than 10,000 HP. Right. But it started using a move called Relief Goods. Oh, Relief Goods. Did you get a Relief Goods? Absolutely not. Like this, this little fucking thing comes from the sky and just heals it. Yeah, Relief Goods. Duh. So it relieves it and it started. With goods. And I was not doing hardly any damage because this, this thing has like a beam coat or something. Mm -hmm. And so you have to break the shield before you start doing major damage to it. And I started to get really worried that I was going to die. Uh -huh. In real life, because if you die in the game, you die in real life. I did something. I called the... Eggs! I called the eggs. God, you got any eggs. To, to keep... To, just, just to be safe, because it was doing a lot of damage. Getting and, the lifeboat. But ultimately, it was a... Getting the robot, Chris. It's got to whack a little bit. Whack to your heart's content. Mm -hmm. I did Erd Kaiser, and then Chaos punched it once, and it died. Oh, you got lucky. Got to code her six when I won. After that, the music resumes, and I climb a Metal Gear Solid 3 ladder to get out of here. Yeah, I agree. This leads to a massive circular room filled with stardust. Cool space room? It's like the entire galaxy rendered out into a projected plane of stars. We get a scene when we use the workstation in the center of the room. Yeah. Momo thinks this is an amazing hologram. Cosmos tells us that all observable space appears to be projected here. Shion doesn't understand the phrase, all observable space, and then... Shion thinks, I wonder what the black area is. It doesn't look like a black hole. By the way, this is, is this text, right? Yeah. Okay. Junior guesses this is not quite all of observable space. And if you look at the Stardust map, there is like a black darkness area yes, that's it, not it, lit. Uh, yeah, we, we've heard a little, bit, a, little, a little bit about secret space here in the past, right? I think so. Chaos is tired of the speculation and literally just tells us it's lost Jerusalem. Yeah. Which in, like to me is like breaking kayfabe. Oh, yeah, this is absolutely is the moment in which Chaos broke Kayfabe. We should have had some sort of bet on whether he, that would happen in this game yeah. or not. But I didn't, I didn't realize he was going to maintain deep cover for so long. Yeah. But I imagine him, like, to me, this is comedic. It's him just getting them so pissed at dancing around it. And he's just, like, fucking, he's looking at his watch, like, yeah. we're almost there. Just fucking tell him. I don't think Lost Jerusalem hasn't been referenced in this game, has it? 
I mean, maybe in the human database, but like our characters are not aware of it. Hey, Fignet, uh, have me when I edit this do Control F for my notes for Lost Jerusalem. See if there's anything. Initializing Fignet. Lost Jerusalem appears four times. Margulis mentioned it once, and the other three are in this sequence. Because Shion hasn't heard of Lost Jerusalem. She says it right here. And then Chaos says, Lost Jerusalem was once our homeland in the distant past, but no one can go near it now. Actually, nobody knows its location anymore. It could be that pitch black part there. Yeah, it could be, bud. So quick question. If no one knows about that, does no one know that that was Earth and no one in the future somehow knows in this transcend Christ time what Earth even was? Has it been like stamped out of existence that hard? I mean, we've transcended Christ for 4,700 years now, so... Yeah, there's got to be a book or something. Yeah, one of I Junior's mean, books. Kazia is still here. We do have, like, lore from Earth, because Junior's yeah. read The Wizard of Oz. Yeah, he's read Wizard of Oz. Somebody has to know that whoever wrote that... Somebody's naming shit out of things from things in the Bible, so... Yeah. I buy that she doesn't know Lost Jerusalem is Earth vanished, but I do believe that Shion knows we came from Earth, probably, unless there's other lore that states we didn't at this point in time. Maybe, I don't know. It's interesting to think about. Junior says, I've heard that the government has been working on a project to find Lost Jerusalem for quite some time. It looks like the radius of that black region is at least several hundred million light years. I love long radiuses. Shion says, our homeland is somewhere in there. So she knows that what Earth is. Like, I I wonder what the original text was here before it was localized. Yeah, like, actually, maybe she didn't understand, like, why it was black, why it was blacked out. Yeah. I find a door that unlocks the other door from floor 44, allowing me to go back to control room 43 and save my video game. Yes, a secret Dark Souls slash Metroid door to right. bypass an area. A convenient facet of level design. Probably the first one in this I, game. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> okay. It's very funny to me to think of demons using these workstations. <laughs> Just Satan typing a little computer. Yeah. He couldn't open the partition door for like 14 years. Yep. Mm-hmm. I find a ladder that goes down to a lower level along with segment address six. Which, yeah. of course, contains a trauma plate. Yeah, I love putting all my trauma in a plate. You know what that does? It makes but, the rice cold and you still eat it? <laughs> no, it protects you from critical hits. Oh, okay. You mean in, in the game? I thought yeah. you meant like yeah. a real trauma plate. Yeah. I head out the north door and enter a hallway, which leads to another hallway full of enemies from Bayonetta. Or enemies that I actually thought I remembered from Xenosaga 2. It's Amaros. Segment bone buddy holding two bronze swords, pinwheel angels shit in the center, almost like a clown frill. Actively rotating halo. Idea caliber back prong thing. Did you mention the human arms coming out of its goddamn head? No, I didn't. Okay. It has just human arms. Just arms. I thought maybe I was seeing some sort of horns or something, but Uh no. Once you get into battle with these things, it's just arms. Arms. Just arms. Arms. I do... These things do look scarier than the fish boy gnosises in like the Satan that we just killed. Now this looks like biblically terrifying. Oh yeah, they've got the standard... Well, maybe not standard, but they got the JRPG fallen robot angel look, yeah. look about them. Big time. You know, I looked up this word on the internet, Amaros. Mm-hmm. Amaros was the 11th on the list of 20 leaders of a group of 200 fallen angels called the Grigori or the Watchers in the Book of Enoch. The name means cursed one or, or a cursed one. The name Amaros is likely a Greek corruption of what may be an Aramaic name. Armoni is possibly the original. According to this, he may be identified as Armoniel also mentioned in chapter 7 of the book of Enoch. Michael Nibb, professor of Old Testament studies at King's College London, lists the meaning of this name as the one from Hermon. So a couple things there. One, did you ever go to Midnight Mass? Yeah. Do you remember that part in all the Midnight Masses that I went to, which was at least three different churches, where they listed uh, the genealogy in order, like Joseph gave birth to blank, who gave birth for 500 years, all that shit. Yeah. And somehow they kept track of all of that. And you just said that Amaros was one of 200 fallen angels that, yeah. we, that had a name. Is that in the Bible anywhere? Or is that in like a, a Samarion, the Jib, the fucking, is that in the extended lore book? The book of Enoch. Where do Eno- I get the book of fallen angels? The book of Enoch. There's a, a list of 200 fallen angels in that book. Yeah. The book of Enoch is a non-canonical book, I believe. Oh, okay. I cool. believe. Yeah. I was going to say that's fucking tight then. There's a lot. We have like a, an enemy list from the Bible. Yeah, I think Takahashi draws a lot from the Book of Enoch, All right. if, if I remember my conversations with Patrick Holloman correctly. I run through the hallway and I fight three of these fucking things. I enter the north door, the music stops, and we get some whirring with a fucking heartbeat. Here, listen, damn it, I captured it. Initializing fake set. Eric thought he captured it, but really, Eric didn't configure the input correctly and captured five minutes of ambient sounds from his basement. Here, have a sample. I did find a sample, though. 
from the YouTube channel Bloom Plays of their playthrough. Here's a few seconds. I thought you also, were Zelda. I think this room is optional. You can walk right past it. Oh, you're talking about the, Mo the Momo birth zone. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, a, it's a little door off to the side. We approach the center workstation, which again looks like the thing Hugh Jackman used in the movie Swordfish. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Momo then drops a banger. This is the room where I was born. Damn. Hot damn. Shion can't believe this shit. The camera swings around the room. And this is totally optional as far as I know. Yeah, you can miss it. There's no buttons or any or anything that you've got to pick up in here. Cutscene. The camera swings around and we've entered a cutscene. Momo talks first. Mommy never told me what this facility actually was responsible for during the Milshin conflict. But I think I know. We then cut to a Technicolor Dreamcoat haze from the sky when Milsha was engulfed in the shit. Gnosis start flowing out of magic symbols in the sky. Momo continues. When I was born, Daddy died. That vision was true. And what happened afterwards was... It's just like Mommy said. This is an abominable machine. A lot of people died because of my birth. Does that mean I'm an abomination as well? Just like Daddy? Hmm. Answer the question, Chris. No. I don't think so either. I think no. you're your own person. Yeah, I agree. Junior offers words of comfort, but then stops short. Shion picks up the mic for my short king. No! You're still their child, right? No parent would ever think of their own child as abominations. Surely. And then it cuts off. Chris, is that true? I vote present. Chris, if <laughs> Chris, if your children were replaced by robots that looked just like your children, could you handle it? And I know this. Mm -hmm. No, I could not handle that. So you wouldn't live through AI, the movie starring Haley Joe Osment, directed by Steven Spielberg, based on Stanley Kubrick's original work. No. Next question. If your children were replaced by robots that looked just like them, acted just like them, if you killed them, would it be murder? Yes. If you killed your robot children that are your children, it would be murder? Yes. Okay. I just wanted to see where your head was on that. If you, if your kids, if you made a Momo out of your kids. Yeah, that's the same as like the cons. We've talked about the, the, the humanity or, or non-humanity of, of the realians throughout this game. And the answer is obviously, well, not obviously, but the answer from my perspective is yes, they have the right to exist. I'm not Albedo. Okay. Or so, whoever. But I just want to make sure we're not talking about consciousness transferring. We're talking about child rebuild. Yeah, there is a show that deals with this. Oh, I'm sure there is. Yeah, I, I'm not having a big brain moment here. It's called The Venture Brothers. <laughs> I thought of another question. What if your real kids still exist and the robot kids show up one day? Do you kill them then? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Before your kids see them, bury them out in the backyard. I'm only saying that because I don't want four kids. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking multiplicity. All right, we return to the playable Proto Merkaba where inner space resumes. The stairs on the left side of this place are busted. I use the elevator at the bottom of the stairs. At the bottom is another save point. I exit west and make it to a giant freight elevator with a green flashing button, a button that I imagine has been flashing for the last 14 years. It must be using new LED technology takes us down. We can walk on it while it moves. I have memories of fighting Gnosis during this, which I thought might be Xenosaga 2, but no, it's this one. I was not expecting an elevator battle. Do elevator battle, I swear to God, there's one of the end of Xenosaga 2 as well, but it goes up instead of down. Elevator battle in succession. First we fight two Amaros. Eat my Erd Kaiser, you bitch. <laughs> yeah. I and used Erd Kaiser a lot here too. Amaros X2 and Bara Kijal for the next one? Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. I looked that one up, Eric. What is it? The ninth watcher of the 20 leaders of the 200 fallen angels that are mentioned in the ancient work called the Book of Enoch. The name means lightning of God. Fitting since it has been said that Bekeel, Be, I don't do your best. Barakia Jal taught men astrology during the days of Jared. Barakajal. Also, it looks like Balbas Bal from Virtual On. Thank you, Virtual On reference. Yeah, these things also, I think, have some, some army arms 
poking out of their bodies. A lot of arms. Well. Angels have a lot of head arms for extra holdings. Yeah. I mean, this is the best creature design that we've seen, right? Oh, yeah. These things here, they save the best for last, which yeah. is amazing. You only find them a couple of times. Yeah, because they're not... I mean, they're not noses, right? That's a great question. I don't think they're noses. I don't think they are because they're fundamentally... They have a different design philosophy, but that also calls into the question what fucking Satan is doing three floors up. The Satan is a gnosis. Satan's a gnosis? I think it's literally called a demon as a gnosis. Yeah, because like, it, what is a gnosis if not something named from lore? Like a, yeah. a creature from lore. Okay. And these are all specifically named after angels. So maybe, I don't remember who it was. Yoki Mizrahi, one of these fuckers, talking about the true form of, of humans. Is this the true form? They've got our arms, after all. My arms are, have a functional purpose. They remind me of... I'm not whiffing this, but they remind me of the things that were in the final dungeons in Xenogears. I don't remember. I don't oh, remember in that called. red place? I don't remember either. The, uh, just the, the general enemies that were all over the place. I don't know. Finally, your next second penultimately, we get Azazel. Azazel? Yeah. I looked that one up, but I could not find anything on it. So I'm assuming that that was localized in a way that made it, Fucked it up. difficult to translate or to, to look up. But I assume it has to be one of the 20 leaders of the 200 fallen angels. Because oh, what yeah. else would it be, right? Yeah, of course. Big boy, swimming, swimmy arms, rotating halo, also biblically accurate bayonetta. His horns are hands. It's fine. It's totally fine. I'm not worried. Yeah, not at all. And then finally we fight one more Azazel and one ex Barakajal. Yep. I do love that Mizrahi's lab is loaded with the most angelic and fucked of all gnosis. Yeah. Even though we just agreed they weren't. Like he's been conducting the wildest operations down here to draw them out. Do you have any diegetic reason for these things to be down here? Like is this where all the experiments just like didn't, like his final work? Honestly, I think that these creatures were supposed to be used in a section of the game that didn't make it into the game. Okay. Yeah, you know what tries. I mean? Like yep. some sort of thing was supposed to happen and these things would would show up and maybe they will in the future. Game, like in know. Xenosaga 2 when there's three dungeons after the game with no story. Yeah. Also, pro tip, when you're done, ride the elevator back up and use the save point. It mm-hmm. moves up in real time. It takes forever and you can't skip this and it doesn't skip itself, but you can use that save point without battles. And so the battle, so you won't have to do the battles again? Right. Really? Correct. Oh, okay. I was worried about dying on the final boss because I didn't have to do this goddamn elevator again. <laughs> After the elevator, move through the hallway packed with Gnosis. Four of them. I run and evade all four. Fuck it, I'm done, dude. Fuck it, I'm done. Yeah, I Shion, just... Cosmos, and Chaos level 40. That should be good enough. I ran from all these things if I did encounter them in battle because there's just way too much Yeah, there's there. too many. They packed. I'm like, this is the PS2 and I get it, but you can't put that many things on screen. What are you all doing? No, there's too many. This is a Dynasty Warriors? Yeah. My guys, my guys were level 37 and that was good enough, so. 37 in a row? 37 characters in a row. Cutscene. That leads us to an even longer hallway, which leads to a cutscene with all of our dudes running down that hallway. Group runs are fun, Chris. I do like the perspective, the side perspective. It reminds me of like the front of comic books. Yeah. Like Chris is reaching for comic books. Like this. Up something called a Marvel's event, Devil's, Devil's Reign with like, uh, the Spider-Man and the Lady in Blue. And there's a uh, Captain America and... But they're all running towards something. They're standing. Well, but the, they, they're in, in, in fighting stance. Okay, yeah. Fighting poses, Mortal Kombat 3 yeah. uh, versus screen. Thank you yeah, for the there, visual aid. There you go. You can really tell here, but I also love how everyone in the game has different footfall sound effects, specifically Ziggy and Cosmos. They're all in the mix. The run terminates in a future room where we hear a familiar voice tell us, You're late! Who is it, Chris? It's Alpedo. We look up and he's standing on the walkway of a column. I was about to give up on you, Ruby Doe. Take a look. This thing has a full belly already. And that's never what I want to hear from a villain. This thing has a full belly. I don't know what thing you're talking about, but I don't want to have a full belly. My dude jumps down to meet us and he lands gracefully. Like he almost takes a bow as he rises back up, which I think is just perfect. Mm -hmm. Albedo opens his eyes and asks rhetorically. Well then, what shall we do now? Shall we continue where we left off? That's where we won the battle but lost the cutscene? Yes. My dude then starts glowing blue, and ethereal noises start screaming from his presence. What do you think he's doing here? I know what he's doing here, because he's about to say it, but he is revealing the power of his will, which is purple shit with a face on it. Yeah. Junior can't believe this shit. What is that? How, how are you doing this? Cliff Racer pointed this out in a previous real net, but I think it, it should be repeated here, but like, Albedo is the game's through line for the entire concept of the will to power. And he's literally manifesting that power right now. 
He's like, this is the power of my fucking will, dude. This is my will to power. What do you think this game's called, man? Yeah. Finally, we get a titular line, sort of, kind of. Yeah, and he says it. Here he is. He, re- he wins the video game by remixing its subtitle. Yes. Don't be so surprised. This is the power of will. A fundamental power that exists within everyone. What you are witnessing is simply your perception of it. And you know what? Perception and pain are but one and the same. So, go ahead. Feel my pain for yourself. I assume that he is able to manifest it like this because he is on the Udu. He's on the Udu, but also, did Cosmos want to be on the Udu because she also wondered if pain would make her more human and I guess activate her will, question mark? Like, there's a lot of pain as per- like perception, reality, all that shit is yeah, that's remixed over and over again. And Cosmos said something similar, like Cosmos was on step one, whereas Abido's on step six. I think so. And Cosmos, I don't think at this point, Cosmos has a will to power. Oh, no, I don't think so either. I think she's still trying to like break out of the programming. And part of, yeah, and, and part of the accepting of that pain was, was maybe a, a step towards that. But we actually don't even really know if she, if she felt that pain. Not like a human. Yeah. Chris, can we do this if we have the will to power? Is this power? Can we glow? Yeah. I think the answer to that is no. But we could do some fucked up shit. If but we have people can metaphorically glow. Like you can see when someone's glowing in like mad elation, right? Yeah. Yeah. Also, when his line, pain and perception are one of the same, all of our friends listened to techno music and went to raves. Yeah. Where they listened to songs that had samples like that in it. And I need to hear like a rave song with perception and pain are one and the same. Like <laughs> remixed over and over and just pounded. Yeah. With the fucking bass beat. Mm-hmm. And my final question here, have you ever wanted to be captured by the aura of a cult leader? I've never felt that level of, I'll follow you anywhere charisma from a guy, Chris, but I wonder if this is it and if this is what it's like. When people decide to like pledge themselves to a cult leader, a Koresh, if you will, do they see the aura coming from the guy? I think the answer to that is yes. It's like when somebody puts out like a Trump sign in their front yard. Okay, I was going to say Joseph Smith was another example, but you're, you're saying Trump sign in front yard? You, yeah, yeah. I, I don't You've want to fucking seen, follow. Oh, I, they see the will to power in, I see. Yes, they yeah. see the aura and they join the cult. Absolutely captured. Yeah, I think, is the question, have I ever wanted to feel that? Yeah. I've never really thought about it, but my first instinct here is yeah. 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 I want oh, to feel that. I want to feel that. I want to feel that. Quick question that I just thought of. You and I have played all three Xenoblade games and not really liked at least two of them. And we keep doing this and we found out a podcast on Tetsuya Takahashi's first game. And now we're doing his next game. Are we, do we, is, is he that for, for what we're, for us? I don't are, think are we gonna so. Keep buying his shit. I think that you can find someone to be interesting and not think all their shit is good. Yeah. You know I, I definitely mean? believe that. I do not like Xenoblade three. I like aspects of it. I don't like it as a complete work, but I feel that I feel the same way about all three of those games, actually. So but yeah, much. will to power bad? Question mark. Is I mean, that is that what this is saying? Can be used for good? Question mark. I haven't seen anybody use it for good. I don't, I don't think I have either. I'm seeing somebody use it for bad right now, and this guy's also on the God Juice too. So God, the will to power equals cult leader. Even though no one's really following Albedo except for the. Kirsch washers. Maybe that's why they that's saw a, yeah, something in him. Exactly. Yeah. They have the perception. I just thought of another example. Yeah. I would, I think when like there's a pitcher throwing a no hitter into inning eight, I think they glow and I think I'll root for them with my life to complete the no hitter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But the, the entire like will to power thematic is that, is it just a crazy guy talking shit so he can self actualize on his own fucked up terms? Self actualize is a term born out of like LinkedIn speak that I, I don't, quite understand how to no, I think my- self-actualization comes from the uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, needs. yeah excellent uh, no look citation Chris I think I'm pretty sure initializing fake it. it does to Maslow self-actualization meant the desire for self-fulfillment or a person's tendency to be actualized in what he or she is potentially <laughs> no look citation I'm the fucking John Stockton of citations because if that's what it is yeah, then- Kobe's not real Mr. Stockton go ahead <laughs> if, if that's what it is then I think I might be a little bit disappointed in the game's like I just culminating don't know. thematic. They're setting up the will to power to be like a literal interpretation of power. And I don't know how to deal with that as characters that don't quite have that. But will when we beat him up? So because our wills will trump his through violence. Well, 
What the fuck uh, else is it uh, saying? Our wills do not trump his. Because my will is a man's dream. Yeah. And a man's dream is a giant robot. And what is a dream if not will expressed through subconscious? The Erd Kaiser is our will to power, basically, right? I think so. Are we in the battle yet? Boss fight, albedo. Fuck a dude, suck my giant robot. Yeah, that, I mean, I wrote what I just said. My will to power is a man's dream. A man's dream is a giant robot. Eat this. Yeah. I wish that when Xion were to use the Erd Kaiser, she would have said, she would say, eat this. But I think she just says Erd Kaiser. Let me see if there's anything interesting about the boss in the... Yeah, I'm sure that he has interesting attacks and it's probably a well thought out fight. Maybe there's a 50-50 shot for that in this game. But. Yeah. And note that we're fighting Albedo on the... Uh, he's on foot. Yeah. Which is interesting. It feels more fair than when we fought him in this Yeah, a little bit. In this Simeon. So do you have any notes on what he does? Do you use Erd Kaiser no, right I, away? I immediately used Erd Kaiser. I wanted to beat the game and yeah, finish. I was afraid of having to do the elevator again as well. So uh, let's see what Brady Games has to say about the battle. How about that? What's up, Brady? Albedo attacks as fast as a rabid dog and uses ether to increase his speed even further. His main attacks have a devastating HP drain and a fire-based ether that calls the whole party to some sorrow. <laughs> you weren't, I wasn't called sorrow because nice I've got a giant goddamn robot. Great editorializing here on the Brady Games Guide. As his HP decreases from your attacks, his ability to heal himself increases. Albedo becomes able to restore 1,000 HP to himself by draining a character or eggs almost completely unless you cast Supreme Judgment to lower his ability. I drain two eggs a day, Chris. Albedo can be distracted from this task of slaying you if he... Okay, let's read this sentence again. Let's break this last sentence down before we finish this. Break it down, Chris. Albedo can be distracted from his task of slaying you if he must clear his status abnormalities. So basically just throw shit at him and he'll heal himself and waste turns. I'm just... I'm more obsessed with how this sentence was written. Albedo can be distracted from his task of slaying you. Yeah. I will just, next time you try to kill me, I will distract you from your task of slaying me. Maybe the guy that localized the strategy guide also localized the anime. Localize yourself. Anyway, our blade, X Buster, whatever. Kill Albedo, beat Albedo, and then win the battle and then see the cutscene on the next episode of Retrograde Amnesia. The final episode of season five. Can't wait. But first, let's consult the real net. Initializing real net. Hello, real net. Nice to see you again for this lovely episode of Retrograde amnesia eric vanon says congo is one of the movies of all time it's a michael Crichton book right yeah congo to me was like all right from the guy that wrote jurassic park we got another one we're gonna hit you with it's even better Mm -hmm. director's not as good neither's the movie but it has tim curry in it probably eric vanon says it's deeply funny like rpgs it's just your band of merry lunatics you've got absolute control of the durandal and you're flying your cargo hauler with your handful of special weirdos to the final battle. Parade of Lunatics is pretty good as far as what your typical JRPG party is composed of. I wish, does it, have, okay, you know the scene in Shaun of the Dead when they're going through the backyard and they meet the Bizarro party of themselves? Yes. Is there a sequence in a JRPG where you meet a Bizarro party of you that like aren't outright antagonists? That's just like, where you just cruise by a group that looks vaguely like you and you don't know they're on the same mission you are? That would be a funny gag, but it I don't, really would. Yeah. I can't, but I can't think of one. I don't know. Lopsop Doy offers a different explanation on, like, is Junior bound by destiny? Yeah. And all that kind of stuff. Uh, Lopsop Doy says, I think that's because of an active effort on the part of Albedo, not a thing. It's like Albedo is actively antagonizing him, and it's not destiny that's drawing them together. It, yeah, it feels like Albedo is spinning Junior like a top. Yeah, I kind of like that. Mel says, it's funny how underwhelming Proto Merkaba is aesthetically. Agreed. Cliff Racer says, Tyrell is a Blade Runner reference, which is a good call. Yeah, yeah, it is. Tyrell Corporation. Cliff Racer says, talking about Xion, this is an interesting bit because on one hand, Xion is a licensed Realian technician, i.e. a psychiatrist, but on the other hand, it might be implying something deeper, like there are a bunch of explanations for why Xion might be familiar with mental health treatment, and they're all plot relevant. Like, it seems like she was good at the work for Vector, but her passion is Realian therapist. Yeah. 7 says, I broke kayfade, I am the Lord, Chaos 6-9. Honestly, if they pulled up Chaos's like shirt and he did have a lower back tack to of 69, it would be very funny. Mambo Madness says a Xeno universe where they based all the mythology on the Wizard of Oz and said the Bible will be sick. 7 8 says, I love elevators, I love elevators, I love elevators. I mean, there are no Xeno Gears elevators, right? Not a lot of like steam and airlock oh, stuff I going see. on. I was thinking, I thought you meant like battle elevators. Execution wise, like Mass Effect. Oh, yeah. Loading elevators? Yeah. Elevator action. Ele- Elevator Action Returns is a top 10 Saturn game. I'm anxious to play the new one you told me about last episode. Guess you're going to have to go to Dave and Buster's. I'll just try round one and hope they have it. Eric Fernand says, behold my will to power, behold my giant robot. 
in response to that. Yeah, they should have went all out and, and everyone's will to power is represented by a robot. Eric Vanessa says, thank goodness no season got to 88. Well, no one wanted to vote on Tactics Ogre, did they? <laughs> is that long? I think so. And aren't there multiple pathways? That's true, the multiple pathways, yeah. All right, RealNet. Thank you once again for your participation in the podcast. We'll see you in the next episode of Retrograde Amnesia. This episode is a production of Retrograde Amnesia recorded on January 27th, 2024. Email us podcast at retrogradeamnesia.com. Twitter at Retro Amnesia Pod, Blue Sky, Retrograde Amnesia, YouTube Retrograde Amnesia. Go to patreon.com slash retro AM and get bonus episodes, miniseries, access to the real net, character tournament, wife podcast, all that kind of stuff. Enjoy it. Thanks to Mark Shepard for the music. You're welcome, Chris. And thank you, World Sin, for the podcast artwork. Until next time, Eric. 33, fuck it, send it in. And now you may go back to your locally sourced demiurge. So is is that really what this is like the th- thematic the the will so is is that really what this is like the th- thematic the the will the 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 will the 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 Margulis. Yes, Holiness. I have faith in you. Listen to me! What you think means nothing! What you want means nothing! You do as I say! I am the boot in your buttocks! You! What is your problem? Were you born that dumber your drunk mama slapped you on the wrong head when you squirted out? The madman Joachim Mizrahi. At least that's what everyone thinks. But, just because most people believe something doesn't necessarily mean that it's true. Feb wanted... for me. Shion, it's up to you now whether you choose to withdraw from this painful world, or learn to accept it. That's rich. (laughs) You people are unbelievable. You're going to destroy me? Destruction doesn't sound all that bad. I don't like you! You're bothering Rubido. The way you try and flirt with him. For what do they call it? They call it what do they call it? Shion says, but why did I read the Ziggy line yet? Chaos says it's is uh, is 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 uh, uh the Do you understand what's going on out there? We're on high security alert! There's a war about to start! Playtime's over!